reason I invented the heart rate monitor just so just because I'm an idiot. I wanted to be in this aerobic dance class with a couple of people that actually were pretty. And I found out in doing the class that you did this and then you stopped and you had to do that and you had to do that. And then you had to do it for six seconds and add a zero to it. I never in my life felt anything here, and I still don't understand anything down there. <laughs> the heart rate monitor. <laughs> now let me tell you something from my heart, because I just got blown away in your fitness lab. We could have spent the day down there with everybody talking stuff, so I don't even know what we want to talk about today, because this is the place. And I mean this from my heart. I have never in my life seeing anything like this. Charlie, Megan, and from what I hear about the rest of you. Now my company is a little global company. We're in about 37 countries around the world. We do some interesting stuff. And today you could be at the Mayo Clinic talking, and today you could be at the Cleveland Clinic talking, and today you could be at the United States Olympic Committee talking, and today you could be at the Schultes Clinic in Zurich talking, and today you could be at uh, Sierra Nevada High Altitude Training in Spain, or the Japanese Institute of Sport. No. Oh my God. I got asked to be here. Holy schmoly's clear the slate. Let's go here. And I heard a long time ago that you get nervous for one of two reasons. Either you're really excited to be there, or you're unprepared. Thank you, God. I prepared for this moment for the last 35 years of my clinical experience. So, bear with me. I am on your team, I hope. And wherever I fall, just give me a little bit of condolence. So, who is Microgate? Microgate, that's my company. We're a timing company, optic company, and the fusion of two, we make these things called OptiJump and OptoGate. Timing. We started many years ago, about 23 years ago, they had this thing called Downhill Racing Ski Championships. So the idea was to make timing that was precise to a thousandth of a second to a guy starting at the top of a mountain in a snowstorm and giving him his finishing time. We knew timing. We know timing. We know optics. We have a couple of guys in the office, this guy Roberto, he sits there all day. And we make this lens that they use in all the gigantic telescopes around the world. This little thing, that's microgate. This other thing, that's the rest of the world. But that little <laughs> part right there, that's the heart and soul of this thing that looks into space and says, whoa, that's not one star five billion light years away. That's two stars because we have that kind of resolution. So that a little company called um, NASA it says we're 3.7 times more accurate than the Hubble spacecraft. That's that universe. Whether you believe in parallel universe, elliptical universe, who cares? That's the universe. So then what do we do? We take the timing and the optics. Um, we also do this thing where we time photons, movement of particles. Not just movement of people, movement of particles. Electrons, neutrons, photons. We have things we want to do with that. And I'll share with you later, one of the projects that I'm doing right now, and I hope to share it with all of you, I hope you all contribute to it, is we're going to make the first functional MRI machine a hat that you can wear. It's going to look like a hockey helmet. And instead of going into a big fancy room and doing all this stuff and making it impossible for people to get there because you can't schedule it and it costs too much money when you get there, we're going to make a hat. And two years from now, or three years from now, in next jump, we're going to play past the hat. And we're going to have an instrument that shines a light beam into the brain, gives us the most accurate reading of brain function known to man, sends the information up into the cloud, and disperses it to our next jump web right around the world. That's a project that you're working on. That's a fabulous project that you're working on. Okay, so we make this instrument, we combine timing and optics, and we make a light screen where we make this optogate instrument, and we want to see movement because that's the universe I care about, the human body. And what I need to do is look at that human body more precisely than anybody has ever looked at it before. As the body moves, it tells us a story. Okay, here's the story. Fat guy walking across the room. Okay. Something's going on now. What's his signal support? What's his double support? What's his cadence? There's a little story out of the Mayo Clinic that the first sign of dementia in a young female, 30 years old, 
is not forgetting her lunch, not forgetting her child's name. A gate change. A gate change. So by the time you have a cognitive change, you're already three years undiagnosed. So what Charlie and Megan have talked about is taking the instrument, which now this instrument is validated. That's about as precise as you get. That's the Harvard Gate Lab. That's, uh, that's Stanford. That's the Schultes Clinic. That's not a toy. That's about as precise as you get. We at Next Jump are going to gate print the world. We're going to get a biomechanical footprint on every single person in the world because it's so easy to do. And now we know things. Is the child growing up to be big and strong? Or is the child losing balance and coordination? Is the lady 30 years old, is she getting a gait change? Or is she okay? We have that ability, but we have that ability. I have no ability. I'm the team guy. I train these Navy SEALs, we'll talk about it later, but I'm the team guy. I'm the guy who believes that you do not become a Navy SEAL just because you're a Ranger or a Green Beret, because you could be the greatest individual in the whole world, but if you don't have team capability, get out of here. Because your team is what makes you great. Your team changes the world. Your independence just gives you a little star next to your name. But it's your team ability that changes the world. Next slide, Meg, otherwise we're never going to get done. Aha! So let's do it. Let's, uh, let's play. Whoa, play it. So this little company called Barry Matthew and Walter, otherwise known as BMW, put out this little uh, video. Let's see why. To lead all others, he must also be the best in the corners. And how do we achieve this in every BMW? Balance. Balance. How do you achieve performance in any machine? It's not enough just to be first off the line. Balance is performance. How we how drive depends on how we are aligned. Whoa. There's a natural rhythm to our body. And in that natural rhythm, if I wanted my body at this stage of my life to go 150 miles an hour, I'd probably just increase danger. Oh, there's the task. I'm going to have a multi-billion dollar company. There's the task. I'm going to uh, win the New York City Marathon and come in first place. There's the, the, the task is always there. But what's the ability? We have a natural rhythm to our body. And what we need to do is transform it. We use the physical science side. Ah, but thank God for next jump we have the emotional work side. That's the transformation. That's the transformation. Now at 150 miles an hour, the big multi-billion dollar company, bring me another one. I can handle them all day long. I can ride that life smooth. Over here, the task was just too much at that moment in time. I need to change the natural rhythm of my body. A great professor a while ago taught us this one, Goldilocks. And she got into the thing where you're too slow, you're too fast, you're just right. She learned it with these guys she was hanging out with, three bears. <laughs> and we all take lesson from it. Because if we're going to move to life too slow, we might be protected. But we're not going to get much achieved, we're not going to get much done. If we move through life too fast and we take on too much stuff, whoa, we're going to fall back anyway. It's like these efficient runners, they all think you've got to run and uh, strike on your forefoot and be more efficient running. The barefoot runner that is full of it. If you can strike on your forefoot and go forward, strike. But if you're going to strike on your forefoot, fall back to your rear foot and then go forward again and have delayed onset heel strike, you're going to be very inefficient. So the task is there. We have to make sure we have the ability to face the task. 
Otherwise, with one more guy, oh, my company's not doing this. I get, got great out of the gate. But then as we caught up with ourselves, we went into oxygen debt because we didn't have the ability for the pace that we chose to go through life. And we fall back. So we have this natural rhythm that we'll find ourselves at. You want to do bigger tasks? Fine. Change your natural rhythm. It's like the baby is born. And what does it do? It lays there in its mother's arms and it gets nourished. Until so one day it decides, I have enough balance control, I'm doing something crazy. I'm going to lift my head. So the baby starts lifting its head. And then the baby gains more balance control. These are the primal movements of life and it starts rolling over. And then the baby gains more balance control and it stands up. But it stands up at the greatest time in its life. At the greatest learning time in its life, it stands up to do what? Fall down. And you know what happens when the baby falls down? It gets back up again. And then, da, 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 boom! And da, 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 boom! And that baby is determined to succeed. It doesn't care how many times it falls down. It keeps on driving forward. At the most vulnerable time of its life, that baby drives forward. What happens to us? Oh, I lost my job. Oh, this isn't right. Oh, that isn't right. At a time when we're supposed to be mature and not babies anymore, every little fall down, instead of it being a great learning experience, we turn it into a disaster. Oh, Charlie, help me. Help me, Charlie, please. Let me some money. I, it's all about the money. Are you kidding me? It's about the ability to understand who you are and become what you were meant to be. So we look at life, and I used to say balance is the critical component of movement, the, part, the foundation upon which all other movement is based, balance. If you don't have balance, you're not moving. What do they do? They put an article out there, and it says balance, the critical component of life. There it is. There's the article. Read it later. If you don't have the balance control at 53 years old of somebody else who does, well, you have an increased risk of dying compared to that person. So how are you born? You're born without balance, but you gain it. Your neurons fire the mind-body connection. You develop, and you gain your balance, and you stand up. And you reach perfection at whatever level you are, and then for the rest of your life, you slowly lose it until the ultimate loss of balance, death itself. Because you lay down and you die. So by restoring balance, by restoring balance, we're actually teaching the world to learn to grow younger. If you're losing balance over time, and there's a mind-body, body-mind connection, and we'll go through it all. Then by restoring balance and enhancing balance, you're actually learning to grow younger. To get that mind thinking again. To not be satisfied. To be scared where the next meal is coming from. You know, people say, oh, you got the monitor. Oh, you developed the first energy bar and said no to bad facts. Oh, you got this award for the uh, breakthrough on endothelial dysfunction or something or other. Oh, you're the president of Microgate, who cares? I took the subway to get here today. Because Maggie said, chubby, whoopy, let's go experience life. And let's go dance with the people down in the subway. And maybe you'll learn something to say. Okay. So how can we test balance? We got to start learning about this bad boy. Because we don't want to be moving through life based on a compensatory process. We want to move through life efficiency, well, life through life efficiently. So let's have four people, bum bum, right here, four, four, four volunteers. Volunteer illusion job. Okay. Come on, volunteer illusion job. Come on, no stress here. Volunteer or lose your job. Three is enough. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to give these three next jumpers an instruction. March like you mean it. March like you mean it. March like you mean it. Stand over here. March like you mean it. Nice shirt. March like you mean it. Terrible shirt. 
you should play the show. Alright, so here's what we do. They look like the Rockettes to me. They look like they're perfectly balanced. How do we know if they're balanced or not? Now just back up just a little bit. There you go. Keep it going. You gotta close your eyes to see. You have to close your eyes to see in the land of balance. So close your eyes. And let's do the same thing for a minute with the room quiet. Go. Keep your eyes closed and do this. When I say stop, he'll stop and don't move. Ready? Stop. Okay. I stopped him because he was going to walk through the table and break his knees. All right? He has a forward tendency in his body. She was fluctuating. Forward, back, forward, back. But here's a guy who would have, if we kept the test going the right way, would have made a left-hand turn. <laughs> when he walks down the hallway, is he efficient? He looks like a young animal. He looks happy. Is he efficient? Or is he playing games with us? Because as he walks down the hallway, he wants to make a left-hand turn. He has these sequences in his body called kinematic sequences. And because his anterior, posterior kinematic sequence are not in time, he wants to make a left-hand turn as he walks down the hallway. Okay. So he engages his radar. It's called his VOR, his visual ocular reflex. And his VOR kept him here like a rockette. Once we took his VOR away, he had to rely on the muscles of his body to see who he was. And he's a forward, left-hand turning kind of guy. Wow. What if I have to think today? I'm using a good amount of my energy to correct my imbalance, to bring me to neutral, and then go face the task. What if I had to play tennis today? I'm using my energy to correct the dominance of going forward and left to get back to neutral because you know what? The shot is back and to the right. I cannot use my energy on myself. That's about as selfish as you can be. I correct myself and you're very fortunate again. We have a, a, a room downstairs, the exercise room downstairs, and all this is happening. And you see your imbalances, and you document your imbalances, and you fix your imbalances. Because the energy that you have has to be used for that. That's the task. That's life. That's what you people are known for around the world. And as great as you are, think about any inefficiency in the body, and we take that energy and we direct it more towards the task. Now, we're only talking about the physical right now. In that triad of health, there's a physical side, there's an emotional side, there's a chemical side. All of it has to be brought into harmony. This is just going after the physical side right now. So imbalance equals inefficiency. We need a method. We need a method to look at it. So we came up with a simple check downstairs where we do all at the next jump uh, three-minute drill and you practice standing on one leg. And you see if you can do it for 15 seconds. And it's a progression that they'll all talk to you about. If you can do it with your eyes open, you go with your eyes closed. If you can do it with your eyes closed, you graduate from the floor, you go to the next thing, a, a foam pad. But the balance in your life is never enough. Be greedy. Because the task you're facing is never enough. You're always going to be facing greater and greater tasks. So the game of life that you chose to go after is going to send competition in your way that you have to be better able to deal with it. You're going to play last place teams. You're going to play first place teams. You have to be prepared no matter what life presents to you. So performance, knowing that balance is the critical component of performance, has to be enhanced every step of the way. Never feel satisfied with your balance control. Now, as long as you see it improving, fine. 
But if you ever see it going in the other direction, we ask a question. We have some problems in this country with concussion, dementia, fall prevention for the elderly. Everything is about the loss of balance and coordination. You're the gatekeeper of balance, coordination, emotional. You're the gatekeeper. I know how important you are. I've been around a much longer time. You guys and gals don't know how important you are yet because you haven't experienced all of that. I have seen some of that. And the only place to rectify that is a joint effort here. And I mean it from my heart. This is a fabulous, fabulous place. Okay, so now we have this subjective way of seeing what's going on. We need an instrument. We want some objective way to see what's going on. The reason is, so we come up with a couple of tests. I've actually renamed the March in Place test the C2S. There's C himself, court sense. There's C himself, Charlie. So you have the C2S. It precisely looks at balance, timing, coordination. The cousins and brothers of balance are timing and coordination. Am I training and improving my timing and balance and coordination? Or am I failing? But don't wait. It was amazing one year that they told me there was a wall at the 20-mile point for the New York City Marathon. Everybody's going to hit the wall. This was at the pizza party the night before. Obviously, I went to it. <laughs> <laughs> so I drove out to the wall. The year was like 1993. I went, me, Alberto Salazar, I don't know who was in the car that day. We drove to the 20-mile point. And even on the stuff we were on, we didn't find no friggin' wall. There was no, we searched all over the place for the wall. Then we figured it out. The wall starts many, many miles back. Just like in life itself, the wall starts many, many miles back. Moments of inefficiency, moments of loss of balance control. I made my flight time of my right leg be more than the flight time of my left leg and more and more and more, mile by mile, without giving me extra stride length. Well, where does my foot go? Instead of just going forward, my foot starts to go up. It goes up. It goes up. Oh! He's limping. When did he start limping? When you saw it? Well, 10 miles ago when his flight time started to increase. So we need an instrument. Because the job here is to see when others are blind. We cannot wait to see it. By the time we can see it, they have it. Our job is to correct it. The proverbial stitch in time saves nine. Okay, so we're going to hand out later. They'll hand out. they got to write it up. The balance protocol that you can do every night. Nice. Practice, three-minute drill, every single night. Improve your balance control. The balance check. Da-da-da-da-da-da-da. How do I know I'm improving? I no longer go forward and to the left. They actually stay in place. How did I get there? My emotional, my chemical, my physical. Real simple. Real simple subjective checks. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down there and get in the machine and do my rhythm check. I open, I close. Precisely to a millisecond, I know the timing of the human body precisely to a millisecond. I'll baseline it. Over time, is it improving? Or over time, is it failing? No longer do we say to somebody, how do you feel? I feel great. I feel great. The guy felt so great, he hits the ball a few years back. He goes into the outfield. He runs to first base. He pulls his hamstring, running to first base. He can't play first base for the Yankees in the playoffs. He's out. But he felt great the day before. Nobody told him he was out of balance. Let's see where we're at here. So, he's, so the movement of our body is always telling us a story. We have to read it. Go into talking about neuromuscular re-education. So what do we have? We have a machine that's going to give you a gait print. We have a machine that's going to tell you about timing, balance, and coordination. We have a machine that's going to put objective data on the recommendations of what you're saying. 
to help improve the functionality of the person. So what did we develop? We develop a system called neuromuscular re-education in real time with precise objective data to guide us. Why? The brain is plastic, thank God. There's hope for everyone. The brain is plastic, thank God. The functional ability of the brain is plastic. The anatomical ability of the brain is plastic. Don't ever give up hope. Don't ever give up hope. Because tomorrow is different if we feed it right today. And we came up with a technique of feeding the body balance, timing, and coordination in the second screen. I think it's the greatest technique, and not because we developed it, I think it's the greatest technique there is in the world of rehabilitation and therapy. So here's what we have. Second screen, neuromuscular re-education, teaching the brain to correct, ow! Charlie Brown, here's my brain. It looks like it needs a little synaptic pruning. Neurons that fire together, wire together. Neurons that fire apart, wire apart. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna add a little, just a little. I'll add some balls of compassion. I'll add some balls of understanding. I'll do a little bit of trimming and I'll wrap it in a light of love. Wow. Synaptic training, trimming, balls of compassion and understanding, and wrap it in a light of love. What do I get? What happened to my picture? Yeah. What happened to my picture? <laughs> okay, just well, make believe. So <laughs> just make believe that this is the beautiful Christmas tree <laughs> at Rockefeller Center. There we go. Okay, we got it. We transformed. We transform. Something happens and we freeze. We have paralysis. Physical paralysis. If something happens. There's a mind body connection. We have mental paralysis. Freezing of the mind. Tell me how the freezing of the mind can be any different than the freezing of the gate cycle. Freezing of the gate cycle is known as Parkinson's disease. Freezing of the mind is known as failure because you froze. You're prepared, you're prepared, you're prepared, and you froze. And all we needed to do is a little synaptic pruning to get you through it. Change the rhythm of your body to get you through it so that the monumental task is no longer monumental. In that moment of understanding, did I pass that already? So we have these people. In the moment of understanding, we'll see what we've always seen. That's important. It's been there. The answers are there. They're just clouded in front of us. The Moody Blues told us this one a long, long time ago. Open your eyes and see what has always been. Open your eyes and see what's always been. It's always been there. You just were clouded to see it. Let's transform it. Open your heart and let's see what's always been. Open your heart. Play the song. It's called The Balance. Moody Blues. You learn a lot from that song. Okay. So improve your balance, improve efficiency, improve lives. Simple. That is the essence of mind, body, body, mind connection. What are we going to do with this ability? Oh, I'm going to build a billion dollar industry. Oh, I'm going to get a big bank book and I'm going to buy myself a big fancy car. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Okay, whatever you want to do. But what we're going to do is take the people that can't help themselves at the limit and help them. Because if we can help the ones that are the hardest in the world to help, think what we can do for the easy ones. And everybody in this room is the easy one. Everyone in this room is the one that has to go out there and help. So we get a guy, Michael. What happened to Michael? Michael's driving on the LIE, his car flips over, it crushes his head. They take off the top of his skull. They put on a titanium cap. The cap is, uh, the, 
The cap is infected. It infects his brain. It infects his brain stem. Michael can't walk anymore. Fatty gets yelled at by his daughter so much that he has to go to the track to lose some weight. Shorts, sneakers, towel, water bottle, Walkman, track, let's go. Fatty goes to the track, and what happens? He gets to the track. There's two guys, big guys, pulling this guy. I didn't know if they beat him up, and now they're walking him off to take the rest of his money. I didn't know what was going on. So Fatty says, okay, I'm stupid. Instead of walking that way, let me walk towards disaster. While others are rushing out, let me rush in because that's the real art of being the next jumper. When others are rushing away from the disaster, let's rush in. So Fatty rushes in at 1.2 miles an hour, goes that way on the track. He beats up with them. Hello, my name is Michael. Here's my story. For six years, I've been getting rehabilitative therapy at a world-class facility, and I can't walk. I need two people helping me. Okay, I didn't feel like walking today either, my friend. Let's just sit down here and talk about it for a little while. Come to my office tomorrow. I'm a next jumper. Come to my office. Take care of that. It's just minimal paralysis with a brain injury. Not even a minimal brain injury, a maximal brain injury. Come on over. Put him on. Here's Michael. So Michael goes from walking with two guys holding him to on this thing called the treadmill in about three months. Michael used to be out of balance by 86% when we first put him on the treadmill. Michael's zone was one, uh, 0.8 miles an hour. He was really a Chevrolet. Now Michael's at 2.8 miles an hour walking on the treadmill at 0.4%, and this is a month old. So Michael now walks on his own. They call him the miracle of Mayo Pack. He lost his balance timing and coordination, feed him balance timing and coordination. Full stop. Next picture. And there's that little click as a metronome. Remember we talked before about rhythm? How to find Michael's rhythm. So I retune his brain at the right rhythm, so I built a metronome into the system. And how do I know it's the right rhythm? Because at his natural rhythm, just like anybody else, he'll have the least amount of asymmetry. When I push him beyond his limit, his asymmetries grow. So am I training him or am I abusing him? We train people. We don't abuse people. There's a fine line between training and abusing. I ask you to do something that's too much for you, I abused you, mentally, physically. I don't ask you to do something that's enough for you, I abused you, mentally, physically. I take that natural rhythm and I keep on transforming it to all the compassion that we see in the room. Let's take a look. Next guy, Justin, whoa, 12-year-old playing a little football game. Before the game, he bends over, he takes a, a, a knee to the side of his head and his brain starts bleeding, 12 years old. Helicopter him out, send him to Westchester County Medical Center, open up his brain open up his brain, stop the bleed, but at 12 years old, tell him, you're done. You're never going to play with your friends again. You're never going to play with your friends again. You've done enough. You're 12 years old. So a mother brings him into the office, and the mother says, Dr. Gorman, can you help my son? And she's crying. See, you forgot to tell me one thing about being an Avenger. I got the better me plus better you is better us. I got that. I got that. I got that. And then I know about the Gandhis of the world. I know that. And I know the word Avenger. But you guys didn't even go the full gamut of your great potential. What is an Avenger? What? is an Avenger. It's a tear wiper. Simple. An Avenger is a tear wiper. Because you have to be an Avenger to look that mother in the eye and say, don't worry about it. Your son will be fine. Don't worry about it. Your daughter will be fine. Don't worry about it. Your husband will recover. I think an Avenger is a tear wiper. Because an Avenger is the one who restores hope to others that think they've lost their hope. 
Come on, God damn it. You know how great that is? That's us. That's this company. I'm an Avenger. I'm a tear wiper. And I restore hope to those that have lost their hope. Whoa. What does he do for a living? Run a hedge fund and make $30 million a week? Who cares? I'll teach you how to trade stock. I'm an Avenger. I'm a tear wiper. I restore hope to those that have lost their hope at whatever level. So there's a story about this guy. Here's Justin. Here's his scar. Here's the office. Justin, da 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 da. Read the story. Justin's cleared. He's playing full. Thank you, Fatty. He wants me to bring him to the Rangers so we could have a couple of beers together because his mother doesn't let him drink beer. Okay, so I'm bringing him to the Rangers and we're going to play. And he's playing football and he's doing so. Because he's cleared by the same neurosurgeon that said you'll never play again. The same neurosurgeon calls the office and says, what the hell is going on there? Nothing. Except restoring balance, timing, and coordination. That's all we're doing. Go down the next jump to get a little chemical done. Go down the next jump to get the emotional done. Put it all under the same roof and tell me what the greatest company in the world is because that's a hell of a powerful company. And here's this guy, 37-year-old guy. He had no choice. He's born with this thing. It's the glomeruli of blood vessels wrapped in his brain. Nobody knows that. So at the age of 37, they decide to leak. Well, he's at the kitchen sink. They leak. He lays on the floor with a massive stroke. Well, his two-year-old is jumping on his belly saying, come on, Daddy, get up. This guy is out cold at a stroke. They finally find, the, somebody comes home, they find them, they rush him to the hospital, they open up his brain, and he's in a coma for 30 days. They bring him to the office. They brought him to the office 1.2 years after the injury. For 1.2 years, he's going to a facility. This guy right here, Robert, he's a next jumper. Robert's a next jumper, he's one of us. Robert decides, I'll be the virtual foot switch. This guy was in a wheelchair the first time they brought him to the office. And Robert's down there giving him instruction, following the second screen on, come on, Brad, let's talk, let's walk, let's do it again. Brad goes from wheelchair to impossible to he had electrical wires all over the place trying to stimulate his muscle. And Robert, this little guy who has our philosophy, says, here's the technique. Let's do it, Doc. Let's restore hope. Brad writes a letter. Write the letter, Brad. Oh, Brad had it dance since the stroke. The lady who does movement therapy in our office decides, let's do the cha-cha. I don't know if we have a video of it, but they're actually, for the first time, doing the cha-cha. You see, life's a dance. So let's restore dance to everyone. Life is the ultimate dance. So Lauren says, okay, follow my little hips. I'd follow those hips anywhere. Okay, let's go. And Brad starts so that that night his wife can call crying, not of sadness, but of joy, saying me and my husband just danced for the first time in, the, in our room playing some Frank Sinatra summer wind song. Hey, a little bit too much information for me. <laughs> Just dance, okay? Just dance. So he writes a letter. There's no way this letter should have said, Dear Dr. Gorman, and we don't have time to read it. But it basically tells you that he was in a wheelchair. He knew from his injury that normal therapy would never restore him to life and that he wanted to come on in and he did all these great things and, uh, and he basically says the fact that I have gone from wheelchair to daily walks of a mile is a miracle and I'm not done yet. See, I'm a tear wiper. The wife was crying, the kids were crying. I learned a little bit from you guys. I learned a lot of it from you guys. And I apply it. And if I can help that disaster and restore hope, bring it on. What do you want to talk about today? Some guy who's suffering in his business? It's an easy one. What do we want to talk today? About some athlete who didn't get a big, uh, 
uh, contract because Art Tellum couldn't uh, uh, represent him the right way. That's an easy one. We want to talk about some team that didn't make it to the Super Bowl. That's an easy one. What do you want to talk about today? How about talking to somebody who lost all signs of hope and you restore hope and put that little NJ right there on that chest? Okay. Better me, better you, better us. We know all of that. What else you got? What else? That's the end? This is the thing. Okay, so let's be Christopher Columbus. Let's go right to the shores. Get some little money from Isabella. Let's go to the shore. What's the next jump? The next jump is into uncertainty. What do you think you guys are doing? So I'm Christopher Columbus. I fill myself with passion. I fill myself with whatever I need, courage. I fill myself with idea and I take the next jump and I go find the promised land. JFK, let's go to the moon. Not because it's easy, but because it's hard. The next jump was to go from Earth to the moon. That's the next jump. How about for Fatty? Fatty, lose some weight. Fatty, get your act together. Fatty, come down here and work out an hour thing. I'm sure you guys would offer me help if I wanted to come here and do some stuff. Fatty knows how to walk. Kind. Single support. What am I in now? Double support. Back to single support. I might not like that. I go right back to double support. What's double support? The cloak of complacency. The protection of mediocrity. The cloak of complacency. The protection of mediocrity. Think about it. You're comfortable in your zone. The cloak of complacency. The protection of mediocrity. And I'm in double support. Oh, I want to fly. I want to pass that. I want to shed those cloaks of mediocrity and complacency. And I want to be what Next Jump taught me to be. I want to experience not just life, but I want to learn how to live. How do you live? You stand on one leg, you remove the double support, and you fly to the next one. And you fly to the next one. And you run. And you know what? For the first time in your life, you feel this thing called life itself facing you. You feel the breeze of life coming at you because now you've learned how to remove double support and you've learned how to take the next jump and run. And in life, it's a marathon. And what we're going to do, we'll go, go through it at different speeds. But in this marathon known as life, we're going to be as balanced chemically, physically, and emotionally as we can to make it the smoothest ride so that when we do have moments of failure, we're happy. Whoa, the great educator is here today. Failure, failure. I'm going to learn a little bit more today. Failure, do da day. Failure, failure. I love failure because I learn from failure, okay? Otherwise, I'm whimpering in the hallway worrying about something. So let's see what we got here. Take it out. Da, 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 da. So I am a failure. I'm a good one to admit to that. Because think about it. Fatty has been practicing clinical practice for 35 years, seen over 250,000 patients. And the only thing I have for it is a big word, crisis. Healthcare crisis. Write it out. Make it a capital C, period, R, period. Write it out. Crisis. C, capital, period. R, capital, period. I, capital, period. S, capital, period. K I R. <laughs> Spell it, period. Capitalize it. Got it. Now I mean this from my heart. That crisis is the concussion crisis. That crisis is the autistic crisis. That crisis is the fall prevention crisis. For regular people, but not for us. 
we got him. And we got him. There's a guy out in the hallway. His name is Gordon Ewing. Here's what happened many years ago. This lady bites a friggin' apple. Eve, I think was her name. She bites the apple. We get thrown out of the Garden of Eden. And there we are floundering for a gazillion billion years. And this guy creates a place called the Field House in Alpine, New Jersey. And we gather there and we do smart stuff, we think. We do stuff. We don't really know what the hell we're doing. But we do stuff. We do know that we wipe every thou with Charlie and Megan are coming over. We want everything to look right, okay? So we have Gordon and we do stuff. But we got this guy. Because I think even Gordon will say to you, we're a little bit more inspired on the day that he comes and talks to us. See, Megan, don't give all the credit to Charlie. See this beautiful lady? That's the dream I can talk to. You know, there's dreams, but then there's alive dreams. That's the dream I talk to right there. But this is the man. And I know a lot of men, this is the man. So it brings me back to crisis. What does crisis mean? Charlie's resiliency inspires so individuals succeed. This is the man that's taking the word crisis around the world. And he's saying, follow me. Even I hesitated when I first heard it because I said, what the hell is going on here? I can't remember. What the hell is going on here? And then I found out, and I believe in my Lord more than anything, but I knew there's going to be a guy one day to help, and that's this guy, Charlie Kim. And you guys are so lucky, I'm jealous. I never thought I had a jealous bone in my body. I can't, but I am. Because I want to be here, because this is so fabulous. So crisis, Charlie's resiliency inspires so individuals succeed. Isn't that what it's all about? Taking the crisis, transforming it, and listening to the man. You don't need Fatty. Fatty is so honored to be here and share whatever we do, that whatever I have, it's yours. Whatever I have, whether it's Peter, whether I have his microgate, uh, I have new products coming out that it's yours. Come on. Don't make me cry. Your next jump. God bless you. Okay.